Amen. Amen. I thank God for being the center of my life. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody else? You got a got a word you just want to share, even a testimony. Praise God. Uh, uh, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. We follow after his heart and his goodness and righteousness. Yes. And not only does he call us friends, but he calls us sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Lord. beautiful family. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Before we move on, praise God. Um, you know, I want to just let you know that I, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you. I want to welcome the internet audience out there. I'd love to give you an opportunity to, to, uh, to share what's on your heart too so if you want to go to our facebook page or you just want to send us an email you can send something to uh, pastor at vwcdixon.org if you want to send us a letter in the mail and you want to participate in the tithe and offering you can do that as well uh you know we're believing the lord for a, a, a lot of things around here and you know it uh in this world, because we're in this world system still, it requires finances to uh, to, to do things. And uh, if we're going to uh, win, we're going to pay for this property and move into the next phase of development. <laughs> it, uh, we just uh, we just need your help, Amen. Uh, I don't believe in begging. Uh, because uh, scripture says I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed out begging for bread but it doesn't hurt to put the need out there and say hey you know we got some things we need to accomplish and it's going to take some help from folk that can that can help us out so we, we appreciate the Lord for uh, you that are here with us this morning appreciate those that will either be with us this morning through the internet or will be with us later as we make it available to those that can watch it at any time. Um, but this morning, you know, the, the one of the things that comes to, once comes to mind a few weeks ago, we talked about living from the inside out. And I realized that after, well, after a few weeks of kind of thinking on that thought and, uh, you, you know, I realized that really that's, that is the, the gist of everything that we do really is learning how to live from the inside out. And and, and what am I talking about? I'm, I'm talking about in 1 John 4, 4, it says, Greater is he that is where? In you than he that is in the world, right? So greater is he that is in you. The problem that we have many times is is tapping into the greater he that is in us because we're so connected to the world around us. And some people find, uh, find it difficult to surrender their uh, surrender their life completely to the Lord because they're afraid they're going to miss out on something. You know, trust me, I was out there long enough and, uh, you know, the fun that I had, the whatever I had out there in the world, it was just fleeting and passing. And at best, it led to death. That's the ultimate purpose of what's out there is to take us into a place of death. And uh, this morning, as I was getting ready, you know, it's funny how the Lord just began to, to speak to me as I make myself available to him. Uh, 
Can anybody feel me up in here? <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, the, the problem is in the busyness of our days and our weeks and months and the busyness of all that we do, it's sometimes difficult to just sit down and say, okay, here I am. You know, Jesus made a pattern of this every day. He made a, this is a lifestyle for him of getting up early and spending time with the Father. And sometimes, you know, we, we go through, uh, you know, we go through our devotion, we go through our time just so that we can get out the door and hurry on for the rest of the day. And, and that becomes our, our way of doing things. And, you know, we have kind of dumped or unloaded stuff on folks in the past uh, week or two about those things that are going on out there in the world and and uh, in particular some things that are being prophesied and spoken uh, you know within the church world uh, but I've got good news this morning uh, all is well <laughs> all is well you know why is all I, the only reason I can say all is well because all is well within me now, I can't say anything about anybody else. You know what? I can't judge you in hell, and I can't judge you in heaven. I can't judge you into hell, and I can't judge you into heaven. I can't judge you into any of those places. People will say when somebody dies, well, you know, they was a good person. So do you want me to judge them into heaven because they were a good person? There's a lot of good people going to hell. <laughs> There's a lot of good people going to hell. We can't judge them. Only the only the Father uh, is going to judge. There will be two, two thrones of judgment. You know, I, I want to be before the judgment seat of Christ that you receive the rewards and not the other that's going the other direction. But, you know, Jesus, and I want to preface uh, some of this and say, you know, we do need to live from the inside out. But, you know what, Jesus said, and I love Jesus. It is something. Uh, Jesus says something, and it's like, for real. <laughs> listen, to th listen to this. He says, "Tribulation shall come." Yeah. Well, wakey, wakey. Hallelujah. You've been been alive very long. You know that. But then he says, "Be of good cheer." I said, "Now, what kind of joke is that?" <laughs> Where's the punchline here somewhere? Is there something? There's something else to follow here. <laughs> you know, uh, tribulation's going to come, but be of good cheer. Well, that sounds like a bad joke. But you know what? When we realize why tribulation comes, then we can be of good cheer. In, in Matthew thirteen twenty one, I want you to look at this with me. Matthew thirteen, verse twenty one. And I'm going to go through several passages, and you may not be able to go through all of them, but those of you that are disciples of Christ today, uh, you can make notes and or watch later on the Internet, whichever you decide. You know, there, I believe there's three levels of involvement in the kingdom, okay? Three levels of involvement in the kingdom. There's, there's first the believer. you got to believe in order to enter the kingdom. Second, uh, 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 way of participating in the kingdom is to become a disciple and then the third level of involvement of kingdom living is actually being a Christian they say oh when I accepted Jesus didn't I become a Christian well I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure does your life say it is does your life say that you're a Christian because what does it mean to be a Christian it means to be what like Christ or Christ like so if you still behave like the world and you just got saved snatched out from the gates of hell you just got saved can we really say that you're a Christian or can we at best say that you're a believer that is entering into that discipleship phase then going to be living out the life of Christ at some point in your life you know, and I, that's why Christianity has such a bad name in the world. This is why this is why people in the world look at in other nations look at us and they say, "Oh, those Christians." They'll watch a movie that comes from the West and they'll say, "Oh, those Christians are just the most worldly, devilish people." That's why Islam is, you know, they have they have a right to we we got to own some of our 
issues in the church. You know that, right? We've got to own some of our issues in the church. We have not been Christ-like. At best, we have been believers, and hopefully we have become disciples. Even, uh, even uh, Billy Graham said, if I had it to do over again, I would have made more disciples than just converts. Because at the point of becoming a, a believer, becoming a convert, there's a decision made. And what is that? They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Just because you're saved and pulled in out of the boat doesn't make you a, a uh, 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 how should I say it? Doesn't make you the boat captain. <laughs> just because you got saved out of the waters doesn't make you a boat captain. It just means you got saved and you're not going to drown. You're not going to die. Praise the Lord. So now it's time that we grow up before we blow up. All right, Matthew 13, 21. Hallelujah. Um, somebody read that. So now what's the purpose of tribulation? The, to get you off of the word. One of the one of the main things that I see in the believer's life that what happens is a word will come to somebody and say, Oh, you can be healed. Or you, you don't have to dwell in lack all of your life. You can prosper. You can prosper. God will prosper you. But Deuteronomy 8.18, it's God that gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth. So we know that God wants us to prosper because it's, a, it's like I said earlier, you know, it takes money to, to, to buy properties. It takes money to feed people. It takes money to, to, to help people. It takes money to do things in the world. So God wants us to prosper so that he may prosper his covenant established in the earth. So... So here, what's, what's, what's the reason that tribulation comes? Because of the word. It comes for the word's sake. Tribulation, persecution, better yet, spoken. Tribulation is not a hangnail. <laughs> Perse persecution or tribulation is not even necessarily you not being able to get along with your spouse. You say, oh, I'm just under great tribulation. No, you just, you just, you just stubborn, and you just stubborn and and uh, and being deceived. You say, oh, you know, I'm under such great persecution. My boss, you know, wants me to work an extra hour a day. What persecution? That's not the kind of persecution that Jesus was talking about, folks. Jesus was talking about the persecution because of the word that has been sown in your heart. What is synonymous? Synonymous, I say the word. Uh, synonymous with the word? John 1 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So tribulation comes because Satan doesn't want you to live for Christ. Troubles come, persecution better yet, not just troubles, because everybody has trouble. I would say in this nation, we really don't understand persecution. We don't understand tribulation. Now we're starting to. We're beginning to. We're beginning to see some things in our country that definitely are going that direction. When a school district, what is it, Wisconsin, said, uh, we cannot, uh, if you're going to have a Christmas choir program uh, for for every Christian song you sing, you, you have to sing so many secular songs. And of course, I think that was a little misconstrued, but the, the point was we don't want any mention of Jesus in your Christmas pageant. That's what it's coming down to. So that's why we only have Santa Claus and we get jingle bells and we get everything else but Jesus. So, so is persecution uh, looming? Are there some being persecuted for the sake of Christ? Yeah. Yeah, there are some, but it's not as widespread as it will be. What does Paul say about the afflictions and tribulations we will experience? 2 Corinthians 4.17 
I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna shoot like buckshot this morning and hopefully something will hit. Okay, just gonna shoot buckshot this morning and maybe a BB will hit somebody, right? All right. I don't want to shoot slugs because I don't want to knock anybody out. Okay, I don't want to hurt anybody. I just just want to shoot a few a little buckshot, you know, and then uh, then we'll just trust God to heal everybody up. All right, because <laughs> I know some of the things I say get get un, get under some folks' skin, and that's that's okay. Because man, it had to hit me first before it hits anybody else. When God deals with me something; it's time for me to pass it on. Because misery loves company. No. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians four seventeen. What does Paul say about tribulations? Number one, they're light. These light afflictions. Now, this is a man who was beaten, shipwrecked twice, uh, left for dead on numerous occasions, and he called his persecutions light. How many of us today would go through even one thing he did and stand for the sake of the gospel? As soon as they would come with the whip, many people would be running and say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> many would fall to their knees and say, mercy, mercy, mercy. What do you want me to do against Christ because I want to live? And Paul was willing to lay his life down. The disciples, the early apostles knew that, that what they were saying and what they were doing, there was many times they was told to stop speaking in the name of Jesus. And then they went away counting it, counting it a blessing to be persecuted for the name of Christ. And what would they do? Just go to the next place and keep doing the same thing. These tribulations, these afflictions that we encounter are light. They are momentary. And I like this last thing. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Lord, show me how this works. They work for us. The afflictions that we encounter are light, momentary, and they work for us. Hallelujah. That just makes you want to, that just makes you want to put yourself in harm's way, it sounds like. You know, just, just, <laughs> they're working for me, so let's go to China, you know. Let's go, let's go to where the real battle is. Let's go to Washington. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> Whoo, they work for us. What do they work for us? An exceeding eternal weight. Of glory. Hallelujah. Now that's something to shout about. Amen. That's something to give God glory about. See, the, these these things that we're going through, and, and if we encountered just half of what the Apostle Paul did and could still say the same thing, I'd say we're pretty good. We're, we're doing pretty good. But here he says they're light, momentary, and they're working for us an eternal weight of glory. Look at Romans 5, chapter uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and I think this is, this explains a little bit of what the apostle was saying in 2 Corinthians. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. You know, I think I turned that air up just a little too much. Either that or the anointing is hot today. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now, now, what grace is he talking about? There are many graces of God, okay? What grace is he talking about? That we are justified by faith. This is the, this is the grace he's talking about. Remember in Ephesians 2, 8, where Saved how? By grace through faith. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it don't matter how much good works we do, it's not going to save us. But what? We, we work because we love God. We work in the kingdom because we love God. We don't work to get saved. We're already saved. So he says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
I think that's kind of a little preface to what he's getting ready to say here. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now, again, folks, we're not talking about a hangnail. We're not talking about you and your spouse not getting along. We're not talking about the employer. We're not talking about the cop that pulls you over because you did six or ten miles over the speed limit. We're not talking <laughs> We're not talking about sickness and disease. We're not talking about infirmities of the flesh. What we're talking about is persecutions that arise for the word's sake. We glory in tribulations. We glory in, in persecutions. We glory in these things because it proves that we're doing the right thing. It just proves we're doing the right thing. Some people want to say, well, you know, I was stricken with cancer. That must mean that I'm going through some kind of tribulation. Well, you may be going through a tribulation, but that's not the kind of tribulation that we're talking about here. This is not the kind of thing that we're talking about. And knowing what? That tribulation worketh patience. Tribulation worketh patience. And what? And <laughs> this is good. And patience works experience and experience. What's the what's the pinnacle here? Hope. And hope does what? Hope makes not ashamed. And what is hope? A confident expectation. Now faith is the what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So if our faith in Christ, what it uh, it 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 has to have something to work with. So it works with our hope. Yeah. Our faith works with our hope. We got to have a hope in something. If if we are a hopeless people, then then our faith will not operate. Our faith will not work in the thing that it needs to work in, in the direction it needs to work. Patience works experience, experience hope, and hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen. Praise God. So the persecutions, the tribulations that you go through for the sake of Christ, if we stay the course, if we stay the course, the result is hope that makes not ashamed. I can stand before God unashamed. I can stand before God unashamed of my life lived on earth. Huh? We think that it's that we think sometimes. Well, I'll be I won't be ashamed before men. Well, he said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you. Or if you deny me before men, deny and and shame and shame is basically the same thing. If we deny Christ here, if we're ashamed of Him here, He'll be ashamed or deny us there. It's that simple. So I want to have that confident expectation that when I stand before Him, I'm going to hear Him say what those seven words: "Enter in, thou good and faithful servant." What did Jesus say about tribulation? John 16, 33. He said that we can have peace. We can have peace. When you get there, Pastor Don, would you read that? John 16, 33. Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. Somebody look at your neighbor and laugh. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. You got it yet? Yes. All right. I have told you this so that you might have peace. Okay, so now, first of all, he's already told them several things about what was to come. So he said, I have told you this so that you can have peace. Jesus always forewarns us and foretells us of things so that we will have peace in the midst of the issue coming ahead. So if tribulation is coming, he says, I have told you all this so that you'll have peace. Because he knows if the world can steal your peace, if the devil can steal your peace, he's going to get everything else. Okay, go ahead. While you are in the world, you will have to suffer. While you're in the world, you're going to have to suffer. But cheer up. Cheer up. I have defeated the world. Cheer up. Look at your neighbor. Say, cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. <laughs> that's, that's it. Cheer up. <laughs> cheer up. 
That's it, it sounds simple, don't it? Just say, "Oh, cheer up." Well, you know what? This is <laughs> this is the way we overcome. <laughs> you, you you cheer up. They say, well, you know, all this thing is, all this stuff is going on. I'm tired physically. I'm tired emotionally. I'm tired spiritually. I'm tired in every way. How can I just cheer up? It's a determination of your will to align your will with his will. And if it, it many times I'll go around the house or wherever I'm at, just singing a song unto the Lord, making melody in my heart to the Lord. But there's one thing that always works. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. There's one thing that always works. Stay tuned. In the church, we <laughs> in the church we can get the idea that everybody is just going to get along. Remember Rodney King just said, can't we all just get along? Yeah, that was a good statement. Can't we all just get along? I like that. <laughs> it wasn't just a, wasn't just a, you know, something to say. Uh, uh, that's that's it. Can't we all just get along? In the church, we can get the idea that everybody's just going to get along, and we're going to have this utopian society here on earth. Now, I don't want to preach that. Yet at the same time, didn't Jesus say, "You can have and enjoy life." Didn't Jesus say that you can have and enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows? I mean, that's what he said. He said, I came that you might have and enjoy life. And I believe that. But just because we're not experiencing tribulation like other places are, doesn't mean that it's not on the way. It is true that the Holy Spirit wants to give us favor with man. It's true that he wants to make, uh, make our enemies to be at peace with us. All these things are true, but we also have an adversary that goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The difference to me between the believer and the Christian is this, because remember, even the demons believe. Okay? There's a lot of believers that don't actually live for God. I know I'm going to rock some, some, some theology here, but there's a lot of believers that are not going to make it to heaven. There's no hope for Satan, and he believes. There's no hope for the demons, and they believe. So what makes the difference between a newborn believer and one that's fully Christianized? <laughs> one who's been discipled in the things of Christ. Hey, you didn't need that. You don't need that light over there. Okay, <laughs> we can see in Scripture that there's one thing that we've got to do, and that's we've got to develop godly character. That in the midst of trial and tribute, see that's why I see that's why we need money to pay for these uh, things that blow every now and then. Okay, so this is good illustrated sermon. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I know you didn't do that, but thanks for allowing all things to work together for our good. Hallelujah. We've got to al <laughs> take advantage of every moment. We, <laughs> we can see in Scripture, all throughout Scripture, that developing godly character is, is what we're shooting for. Not just, not just getting, and I know some people don't like this term, but we don't just want a little fire insurance. Amen. Amen, Pastor Mike. Good job. Good preaching. We must allow Holy Spirit and the Word to develop in us the character of Christ. The character of Christ will help us develop godly hope, expectation that overcomes the spirit of fear. See, in the world today, fear is being propagate, propagated everywhere you go. You turn on the TV, and, and I'm telling you, folks, if you don't get good Christian-based news resources, and you're just listening to, you know, Brian, you know, this one, and Brian, that one, and, and all these other characters, ABC, NBC, uh, you know, CBS, and all that, if all you're listening to is that, you're getting a perspective from the world. And it brings and it breeds fear. They'll give you this little, like, one minute or 90 second little blurb at the end. Oh, of all these things that are going on bad in the world, we got one thing that we could find. <laughs> this one guy, Nightly News, with what's his name, Brian something? I don't remember. Uh, something like that. I don't think that's Brian Gumble, but um, 
uh, anyway, he, he they find one good thing at the end of the newscast to tag on the end of it, so that uh, you know makes you feel. May, it, what it does is it lures you back in for the next program, because if you focus on all the negativity, then you're not going to want to necessarily come back. I, there was a time when I just turned off all news sources because I I would sit there and just weep. Man, just sit there and just weep. I thought, God, this is crazy. Is there any hope for the world? Well, and he said, I am the hope for the world. <laughs> so there's no there's no hope for the lost other than in Christ. We've got to watch allowing that spirit of fear to enter in. That's why we've got to live from the inside out. We've got to just, we've got to find out what is actually in us. I can have a box up here. I can have this bag up here, and I could have I could either have just just paper, or I could have diamonds. I, I could have a chunk of coal, or I could have a big old steak in here, ready to be taken home and cooked. You know, go ahead with your bad self. All right, you see, I can, I, you know, I can have all kinds of stuff in here, but you know what? If you just take it home and you don't look in the bag, you may think you've got something. You could be carrying my trash off. Tell your neighbor you need to look inside. Look inside. Look inside yourself. Look inside yourself. See what's in there. We live in a world that is full of what? Full of fear, arrogance, pride, deception, addictions, perversion, and even persecution. They all have the same thing in common. That's the father of lies, the adversary, Satan. They all have the same thing in common. How are we going to change our thinking from about how we deal with persecution. You know, some folks, when they're persecuted or when somebody says something about them, they have a get-even mentality. You know, they did me wrong, so I'm going to do them wrong. They did me wrong, so I'm going to do this. You know, I, I remember in the past I'd done some crazy things in the name of getting even. <laughs> we ain't going there. But did a, did a lot of dumb stuff just because somebody offended me. Or because somebody made me mad. And you know what? It got me nowhere. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. Didn't help the relationship. Didn't help with anything inside of me. Matter of fact, after the fact, I usually regretted what I did. I think, oh God, now it's humiliating to even go back and say, eh, you know, I'm the reason that happened, you know, and try to make it right. Ooh, ah, so what we've got to do, folks, is we've got to learn to live from the inside out, developing the seed of the godly character that was put within us at the new birth. The moment we ask Christ into our life, the moment we recognize our need for him, and we ask him into our life, was the moment the seed of God's character came to dwell in us. Turn to Galatians 5.22. And this is where you find the character of Christ in the form of what the apostle uses here. He talks about fruit of the Spirit. Some people will, will like see fruit in, in this fashion and say, well, we're talking about a banana and a uh, apple and a uh, grapes uh, and grapes or and, and you know they'll they'll start to list off a list of different fruit but see it's not different fruit it's not different gods it's not different manifest it's what it is it's 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 a, it's the same spirit with different aspects with different attributes different points of view it's a different manifestations, if you will. But the fruit of the Spirit, and the, the word Spirit is capitalized there on purpose because it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you, then guess what? It becomes the fruit of your Spirit in the form of a seed. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, 
See how how long am I going to have to suffer? Until it's over. <laughs> Until it's over. <laughs> Until it's over. There's no no uh, uh, no speed limit nor time limit on the on long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith. And that's not faith of God. That's faithfulness. There's a difference. This is the fruit of the spirit. In, in the form of faithfulness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ, those that belong to Christ, have done what? Crucified the flesh with its affections and lust. Those that are Christ have. He uses the word have. That's past tense. Those that are Christ, those that we can look at and say, you know what? You're a Christian. You're Christ-like. Those that we can put a finger on and say they're Christ-like, they belong to Christ, they have crucified. I mean, I, you know, I don't like this any more than anybody else, to be honest with you, because you know what? It means I have to receive and walk in this just like anybody else. I, I, there, was a certain amount of, there was a certain amount of pleasure out there in the world. There was, there was a certain amount of pleasure out there doing the things that we all did before. I mean, that's why we stayed with it as long as we did. If it was discomforting or uncomfortable, we would have stopped doing it right away. But because there's a certain amount of comfort or enjoyment, we keep going back to it. That's why people, uh, that's, that's, why, that's why guys dealing with pornography and, and all these things online, if they don't stay away from that stuff online, they don't run from evil, then they're going to be fighting these images. I walked into a, a, a store yesterday and, and, uh, and, and read something, and I was like, you know, I, I, was, I was fighting that thought for the rest of the evening. Just a thought in an image. Just fighting that thought. It wasn't wasn't nudity, but you know, it it was something it was just a thought that was provoking. And I fought that thing for the rest of the evening, and I was like, devil? <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Fought that all evening and, and, and finally got the victory. But you know what? I didn't just give up. Just because just because it gets tired don't mean it's time to stop. Just because fighting the good fight of faith sometimes gets tiring doesn't mean we just stop fighting. It means we press until. Press until when? Press until you get the victory. It's not always comfortable crucifying the flesh. It's not, and the flesh isn't only skin. Flesh is a mentality. Flesh is a way of thinking. The flesh is, you see, your, your body without your mind would have no feeling. There would be no, no, there would be nothing there to say whether it's good or bad or not. If, you're, if your body had no mind, no will, no spirit in this body, then, then all the oh, you kick that flesh all day, and you know what? It's not going to jump up and say quit. <laughs> try, tr no, don't try. But <laughs> just forget that. Um, <laughs> and they that are Christ, those that belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Man, you know, this is only hard because we make it hard. This is only difficult or challenging because we make it that way. Because our mind is not made up. Many times before your mind even gets renewed, you have to make a determination in your will that other is just not worth it. There is no plan B. There's no escape from doing what I know God wants me to do. There's no escape. There's no backup parachute. You know, I'm going to coast this thing out. <laughs> I'm going to live with God. I'm going to do what he wants me to do regardless 
regardless of how I feel. Because what? I know not only at the end of this life is there a reward for the faithful, but this life is so short. This life is so short. Why do we put so much stock into 80, 100, 120 years, however, however long you plan to live? I mean, if you lived to, even if you lived to be 120 years, I mean, why put all of our stock in this little planet for such a short time? Knowing that eternity is a very, very long time. <laughs> eternity is such a long time. Matter of fact, there's no beginning and no ending in God. You know, I know that when we come to Christ, we bring a lot of baggage into our relationship with the Lord. And the one thing I said at the beginning, one of the things that we've got to we've got to develop, and especially in our preaching and teaching, is we've got to we got to encourage one another. That he's coming soon. He's coming soon. Look up for your redemption draws nigh. Encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with these words. And realize that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. You know, it was the Colossians 1, 26 and 27, I believe it is. The mystery through all of time from Adam and Eve until the crucifixion of Jesus was that one day Christ would come to dwell in the hearts of men. Yes. The Father prophesied it. It was prophesied all the way back in Genesis. So from, from that time until... Until Jesus spoke, there's going to come a comforter. There's going to come someone who's going to lead you, teach you, guide you, help you, walk with you, be your the paraclete, the one that sticks closer to you than a brother. So he's going, if, if Satan would have known that being a part of that plan... <laughs> was going to unleash the Holy Ghost upon all of us and allow us all to experience the goodness of God. There's no, no more Jew nor Greek. Christ broke that partition between Jew and Greek, and now we're all the same in Christ. There's no more male nor female in Christ. And, and, and you know, in, 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 in this world, there's still husbands and wives. There's men and women. But when we, when we approach and reach the other side, it's going to be just as though we're all the same. You know, we're all going to be just like the angels, no marrying, giving in marriage, all that kind of stuff. So there's no, in, in, in this life is where we, we put so much into this. And we've got to encourage one another. And I know it's difficult sometimes. And one of the things that's, I guess, challenging for me right now is when people tell you things like this. Well, we're just working stuff out. We're just working stuff out and we can't, you know, we can't participate or we can't, uh, you know, we, we just got to, we just got to pull away from things for a while just so that we can regroup. And I'm thinking regroup where? Regroup how? See, separation from the body, God has given the church a shepherd just like the sheep and the sheepfold have a shepherd. And a sheep that leaves the sheepfold, it's the responsibility of the shepherd to bring them back in, not go out and say, well, okay, I understand. <laughs> I, I do understand. But at the same time, it's time to bring them back in. And that's really the job of all of us, really, is when we see folks that are struggling, is we all have the same mandate to love one another, to go out and be the example of Christ to the world and to the, our brothers and sisters who are falling away. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Before Christ, we learn how to live from the outside in. What does that mean? We learn how to live by the superficial 
uh, experience that life provides in the, in the world, the enemy, the adversary. We learn to live by all those outside things, forces. We're, we're, we're pushed to and fro by fear and anger and frustration. And we, there you go. Let there be light. <laughs> you know, we live from the outside in. You know, somebody looks at us wrong, so we're affected and we get intimidated or we get offended. But if we look from the inside out, and somebody looks at us wrong, you know, I see them not as a challenge, but I see them as an opportunity. An opportunity to love like Christ would love. That's where we in the church have to get to. That's where we become Christ-like, is when things can go on. What did Jesus do when he was spoken evil of? Didn't say a thing. Didn't say a word. I mean, i got to be like that? I've got to be that Christ-like. Isn't there like a scale of one through ten? You know, somewhere, you know, I can be a two and a half Christian. <laughs> Come on now, can I just be like a, you know, I'd even sell for one of one of the third, you know, just as long as I get to heaven. Ouch, hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, we can develop the attitude of Christ by letting the fruit of the Spirit grow in us. How do we do that practically? Well, live another 10 minutes. <laughs> when something happens, what's your knee-jerk response? When something happens next, what wells up in you? To get frustrated, angry, or offended? Or to think, maybe there's a reason. <laughs> maybe there's something I need to learn. Maybe there's something the Holy Spirit is dealing with me about, and I'm not ready. Yeah, I'm not ready to relinquish that part to Him. Just live a few more minutes, and I'm sure you get an opportunity to develop some fruit. <laughs> he's preaching too long. He's preaching too quiet. He's preaching too this. He's not even preaching. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of us have been spit on so much and screamed at so much, we wouldn't know the word just spoken to us if, unless we were hit with a truck. Not being called to, sh to shear the sheep, not being called to spit in their eyes, you know, not being called to do a lot of things that I see done in the church. Called to love the people and tell the truth. We can develop... Jesus' attitude first by doing what Jesus said. Be of good cheer. Next time something happens, cheer up. Just have this mind. Just, just have this thought in your mind already. See, we're going to plan for the next battle. Plan for the next battle. Next thing that happens, I want you to say, cheer up. Say, self, cheer up. Self, cheer up. So, so the next time something happens, let that be the first thing that comes to your mind. Self, cheer up. Self, get over yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, rejoicing is a choice. Being miserable is an option. Being contentious is an option. Being stubborn is an option. There's a lot of options out there, just like on a new car. But you know what? You pay for every option. See, I want a car with everything on it. Heated seats, electric seats, and all this stuff. You know, but you're going to pay for it. You know what? We, we pay for all the options of the decisions we make as well. We choose to be bitter. Guess what? We pay for it. We think, oh, it's somebody else that's going to pay for it. No, 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 no. We pay for our own frustrations. We pay for that. There's people that are sick. There's people that are dealing with arthritis and all kinds of things in their bodies, and a lot of those things are attributed to mental health. A lot of those things are attributed to unforgiveness and fear. There may be some DNA things in is it DNA involved, but there's also something that that magnifies 
the problem. Fear, bitterness, resentment, all these things, all they do is just feed, feed the problem. Just want to give you a, a, just a last word, basically, this, this first closing. Uh, <laughs> instead of joining in with those around you that have, de have a well-developed sense of complaining, <laughs> a well-developed sense of frustration and woe is me, the next time you're around those folks, uh, shut it off. Don't allow it to enter your heart. How, how, how do you do that? Uh, don't jump. Don't jump on the bandwagon with them. You know, I, I, I know I frustrate people sometimes because they'll get in conversations about things and I'll just stand there and look at them. And they're waiting for some kind of response. So I'm like, I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> so I'm thinking inside, I don't have anything for you. Because they want to pull you into this whole thing. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have anything for you. Uh, uh, you know, it's awkward for me even, you know, standing there thinking, God, I need some help out of this one. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. You know, you try to, if you correct people all the time, then they don't want to be around you. <laughs> but there comes a time when it's like, well, brother, I really don't know what to say about this. Sir, I don't know what to say about this. How about let's pray about it? There's a novel idea. I want to read a little just something posted on Facebook this morning. <clears throat> Though Jesus promised that tribulation or persecution would come, he also said, cheer up. If we believe the B-I-B-L-E, then we know this short span of time here on the earth is going to be a vague memory someday. Paul said these momentary light afflictions are producing for me a eternal weight of glory. No matter what is going on in the world today, cheer up. Jesus has overcome the world and graced you and I to overcome it as well. It really is that simple. Don't complicate the gospel with hearsay or the experience of half-hearted or disobedient people who say they're walking with God. The willing and the obedient shall eat the good of the land. Can somebody say the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land? Even in the midst of famine and pestilence. Remember Joseph? He proved that. And the Holy Ghost will approve it again. We are to be a source of strength in the midst of tribulation to prove that the gospel is good news. Jesus came to seek and save the lost and to empower the believer to live the Christian life. Rejoice, believer, and receive the Holy Ghost with power. Rejoice, disciple, your training in the gospel is empowering you with God's thoughts. Rejoice, Christian, you are Christ's ambassador, the Holy Ghost, and the word you are receiving is enough to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name. You know, I, I know I, I, I uh, throw this stuff out there like, you know, just go and do it. <laughs> I know it comes across like that every Sunday. Well, just go do it. Well, you know, there is something to be said about us praying one for another. And, and I don't want to close this service today without an opportunity for us to pray for one another, with one another. Because we do need one another in the body of Christ. We are not meant to be an island off to ourselves somewhere. We're not meant to just hang tough. It's not just about hanging tough. Sometimes we got to hang with others. It's like what I forget which of the uh, founding fathers said if we all don't hang together, we will surely hang separate. Some, some wisdom in there. <laughs> if we all don't hang together, uh, we will sure, certainly hang separate. And he meant if we don't stick together, folks, we're going to die. <laughs> That's what he was telling us. If we don't stick together, 
is surely the, the enemy, the devourer, is going to pull away. I see him do it all the time. Satan pulls away, deceives. Oh, you know, if somebody finds out this about you, then, then they're not going to want to have anything to do with you. Oh, if they find out this about you, then, then oh, your pride, you, you know, we don't call it pride. We just call it something else that's more, more palatable. But all it is is pride. And pride will lead to a downfall. Pride, when we give in to pride and we say, oh, I don't need no help. I got it all together. I'm going to be the first to tell you right now, I, I need your prayer. I'm going to be the first to tell you today, I need, I need you to agree with me that when we walk out these doors, we're going to fight the good fight of faith and win. I don't just, get, I don't just plan to get out here and, and just hope to make it. Some people got to hope so salvation. Well, are, are you born again? Well, I hope so. I say, what? <laughs> If you don't know so, then you don't got so. You can have a no-so salvation that as soon as you know, as soon as you take your last breath, you won't be with the Lord for eternity. But see, Satan wants to keep us at an arm's length because we're just too in insecure too prideful, too fearful. You know, those things just open up the door for spiritual death. And at best in this life, so much confusion and so much turmoil and so much struggle. And But you know, this is a good time just to unload and just say, you know, I want to start living from the inside out. I want to start mining those seeds of hope that have been placed in me. I want to start mining those things that God had put in me the moment I became born again. I just want us to just let's stand this morning. Uh, again, I'm going to tell you, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I was able to fight a fight yesterday <laughs> And when, because I had made a, de a determination that I had walked out over time. If I was just making a decision, <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, uh, I'm going to deal with this on my own. You know, I just made a decision last week. I'm going to do the right thing. And now, and now I'm struggling in an area. You know, I, I would need some. I would need some brothers to come and pray with me. You know, I would need I would need to get on the phone and say, "Hey, Pastor, uh, I need you to uh, I need you to pray with me." You know, I got people I can call anytime. Just say, "Hey, you pray for me." And you know, we don't have to tell all the dirty details of everything that's going on in our heart and life. Sometimes just hearing somebody on the other end of the line, or meeting somebody face to face, many times just that connection makes all the difference you know I've talked to I've talked to Brian several times in, in, in the past about you know we, we'll be talking about something and then all of a sudden I'll say something and he says well I'm sure glad to know that you're just as human as, <laughs> as I am <laughs> I said well you're absolutely right you know I'm just as human as everybody else put on clothes just like everybody else thank God thank God for the provision uh, but uh, amen so I just want us to before we go today I want us just to get with get in, in groups two, three, four, however many you want to but I want us to pray with one another see I don't want to teach you to be dependent on me I'm your pastor I'm the pastor here but I don't want you dependent upon me. You can depend on your brothers and sisters in Christ to, to pray with you. See, I'm, I'm, my job is to teach you how to depend upon the greater one in you. And yeah, you call me when you need to, because I'll call somebody when I need to. But the more we depend and trust on the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, the more we can walk in the victory and be victory with and for somebody else too. See, if, if two of us are down in the dumps, and how, who's going to help who? <laughs> how can two walk together unless they agree? 
So I just want us to 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 get together with I don't care two, three, four folks, and let's just say you know how can I pray for you today? And let's just pray. You don't have to be going to details about nothing. Say I, you know I uh, financially you know struggling right now. Okay, well praise God, we'll pray. Uh, physically, you got sickness in your body. Say I'm dealing with sickness in my body. Okay, well let's deal with it. Okay. We can do that. You, you all are able ministers to minister to one another. Amen. I know you are, brother. Amen. Yes, you are. Amen. See, you, we don't look at what happened before you came in the service. Take what you heard during the service, and now, now let's let's exercise it. Okay. All right. Let's let's get together, and I'll come around and, and pray with you as well. But just uh, uh, however you want to get together, just turn around to two or three folks, and we'll come around and pray with you as well. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah.